has taken forward the green building movement in northern India. For the past several years, he has been working aggressively on climate change, energy efficiency and sustainability concepts. Meet Puneet Mittal, Regional Manager, Asia Pacific and Middle East, US Green Building Council. Hello and welcome everyone. This is me Pooja Salanki and today I'm in conversation with Mr. Puneet Mittal. Let us first welcome a very special guest for the day. Hello and welcome to the show Puneet. Thanks Pooja for inviting us. So we are talking about green building so much these days. So my first question to you would be, what are actually green buildings? So Pooja, in a very layman's term, uh, if I have to define a green building, so a green building is some uh, is a building which uh, you know consumes less energy, less water, uh, produces less waste during construction and during operations and maintenance. So USGBC as a council, we set these global standards for high performance buildings and communities throughout the world. And this is a 21-year-old organization, not-for-profit not for organization, uh, who, who is developing the green building standards throughout the globe. So we have a brand called LEED, which, uh, which is Leadership in Energy and Environment Design. So LEED basically sets the standards and we have parameters like site, water, energy, waste, transportation, environment quality. So we have a 100 credit system in which uh, you know there is a flexibility, there are a lot of combinations like uh, uh, heat iron effect, like storm water management, like uh, VOC paints, a lot of parameters are involved uh, when you talk about green building. So the combination of all these parameters gives you a green building. Moving further, since you're talking about USGBC and LEED as your product, so uh, tell us more about uh, LEED as well as uh, USGBC. So LEED, as I told you, this stands for Leadership in Envi Energy and Environment Design. Hmm. And that's the brand which is recognized in 150 countries. And uh, that's a program which is, you know, uh, which we have, uh, which is actually sector specific. We have different uh, rating types, which are for uh, new construction, for corrential, for interior design, for neighborhoods, etc., etc. So uh, different project topologies have a, a flexibility of choosing their own type of rating, which we, we offer in terms of lead. And uh, uh, you know, lead basically is sets the global standards for high performance buildings uh, throughout the world. Now, moving further, I would like to know about the lead numbers specifically to India and its comparison with the rest of the world. So, lead right now we have uh, over two lakh projects registered to the council, accounting to be uh, something around 11.5 billion square feet, and the council certifies uh, 1.85 million square feet of projects every day. So that's these, great. Are, these are the volume that we're talking about when we talk about LEAP. So that's a global number. And we are present in 150 countries and you know, uh, LEAP have actually evolved over the period of time. So we started this with version 1 and right now we are in version 4. Oh. So we have uh, you know, the annual conference which is called the Green Build Conference, the largest sustainability conference in the world. And uh, we also have something called the LEAP Roundtable where you know, that's a consortium of uh, you know, more than 35 councils throughout the world sit on a table and uh, you know talk about uh, what they are doing in, in the countries and that's basically the cross pollination of ideas and that's how we have evolved you know over a period of 20, 21 years so that, that's what that was about the global number if i have to talk about india so i am proud to say that india is currently number two countries in, the, in, the, in terms of lead certification outside us accounting to be uh, india has close to 2000 projects registered and certified accounting to be uh, somewhere around 850 billion square feet and we are still growing. That's really great and I think USGBC as well as the Lead India Hub is doing an amazing job by promoting green buildings in India. Now moving further, like we are talking about green buildings, so what are the parameters that make a building green? So there are a couple of things, you know, as I told there are some five parameters what we are uh, broadly focusing on which include site, water, energy, environment quality and materials. And there is also a window called innovation. So if something is not covered within the rating program, we have a window where you know projects can showcase their innovation, uh, and we have special credits for that. So under these modules, we have sub parameters, and you know people are flexible to choose any of their credit that they want to apply for. We usually set the standards. We don't prescribe any particular product or technology. So that's a flexibility, you know, to any project owner to decide upon how to achieve that particular credit. So. That's how the lead uh, works for different building types for different communities. As you mentioned earlier, that green buildings are energy efficient. So, what are the techniques and processes and what are making green buildings energy efficient? See, there are a couple of things, uh, you know, as we have moved upon, you know, the market have also uh, got transformed. 
so earlier we used to talk about conventional chillers now we have high performance chillers so like this if you talk specifically on energy so energy there were a couple of things like glass that contribute that contribute to energy uh, there are chillers there are hvac units there are uh, lighting so we we have evolved over the stage of an incandescent lighting to a led and loud right now you know leds are also becoming much more cheaper so uh, you know all this put together gives you energy efficiency and we from lead look at uh, energy efficiency as a holistic view so we don't prescribe that you have to partic- have a particular lighting system or you need to have a particular vms system so that's up completely up to the client or the owner we take it as a holistic view we we ask projects to do simulations you know which gives the predicted saving over the benchmarks uh, over the international recognized benchmark like ashre ashre so that's how you know we we talk about energy in the integrating systems so talking about the interiors how do you make the interiors See, interiors is again a very important subject because as you know you know any human being would would spend more than 90% of the time interiors and right now you know interiors are much more polluted than the outside air which could be of the factor of 3 to 5% so it's very important you know what uh, we are doing in interiors is what kind of material we are uh, bringing to the interiors so let me just quote an example here so when we talk about diwali which is our most popular festival so what we usually do we paint our house we get new carpets we get new furnitures but uh, you know at, at the end of the day what we are doing we are actually bringing a lot of chemicals inside the building or a house that's somehow you know uh, getting inhaled by us getting affecting uh, that's affecting our life so what in, in interior commercial interiors rating what we usually say is that uh, uh, you know whatever materials you bring to the office or the homes whichever uh, product product i'm talking about they have to be environment friendly uh, they should be they should not be causing much uh, you know harm to the human beings or to the environment during uh, construction and during operations and it has to be also exp- uh, cheap now i would like to know more about the lead india hub yeah so puja lead india hub was created exactly one year before Uh, in fact lead is not something which is new to india lead has been in india in the last 7 8 years but we are working directly from our headquarters which is based in washington dc or through our local partners but we had uh, because of the importance and you know because uh, uh, we understand that uh, india is a very important market uh, we had created hub in india exactly one year before and the basic mandate of this hub is to provide the on ground support to the stakeholders uh uh you know to we we also work with a lot of uh, uh, consulting companies lead consulting companies so one of the objective is to you know uh, uh, improve the capacity and capability of these lead consulting company to give the on ground support to the stakeholders uh, uh to to maintain the consistency and the quality of the lead uh, ratings in india so that's the basic mandate you know uh, why we had started this hub in india and uh, you know we had in the past couple of events that we had done you know the launch event plus uh, you know a couple of more which i'm going to talk about later so moving further now i would like to know about the lead certification so what are the parameters that make a lead certified building so uh, lead certified building actually we have four five modules uh, we talk about site we talk about energy water materials environment quality and there is a window of innovation so these five six parameters have some certain credits so it's a 100 point system anybody is choose uh, free to choose any credit that they want to apply for and uh, usually we don't provide provide any technology or any particular uh, we don't prescribe any method how to achieve it so that's completely up to the project team how they achieve those credits uh, we only set the uh, benchmarks and we only set the standards for green building ratings in these parameters there are a lot of things involved which includes the you know efficient lighting which you efficient water fixtures green water harvesting uh, storm water management site where your site is located uh, how how uh, is the environment quality within the building Uh, how much fresh air you are pumping and what kind of materials you are using is it uh, environment friendly materials uh, uh, you know uh, so a lot of parameters which are you know included in these four five parameters that we you know, just want to mentioning about the window for innovation so could you specify this particular uh, topic so innovation is something you know uh, there are certain things which are not covered in any green building rating uh-huh. so we have given a uh, you know brief window of some credits you know if, if the project team feels that uh, due to certain actions or that due to certain uh, uh, you know initiatives that they have taken it has done a significant contribution to the environment they can apply for those credits which are not addressed in the rating system so it may be you know uh, by exceeding the performance which are being asked with the, um, from the rating system or it may be something with innovative that 
they might have done. Now moving further, when we talk about LEED certification, so when is it actually practiced? Like uh, is it before construction or at the time of construction? What is the whole process involved? See, the current stage when uh, somebody should apply for a LEED certification is right from the design stage. Okay. So that's the right stage when somebody should register the project as a green building project, hmm. engage a green building consultant, uh, wherein you know those people will actually help you to navigate the entire process. They will hmm. continuously guide you on how to you know achieve certain credits. Th this is a process you know which takes uh, if you if you talk about the new construction, this is the process which uh, takes uh, you know until the project is completed. So uh, usually we prefer that uh, you know uh, the project should. Uh, register the projects right from the beginning mm -hmm. but still if you know people think that knowingly or unknowingly they have actually met um, uh, all those mandatory requirements what lead us for they are free and flexible to apply at any stage now after you know many years of construction how can one ensure that the building remains green and energy efficient? That's a very good question, Pooja. In fact, that question has been asked to us by a lot of stakeholders. Mm. You know, what about the performance of a green building? Correct. So, you know, in the last several years, our team have done an intense research and we have come up with an excellent solution called the lead dynamic plug. Okay. So, that's something which is called the performance suite of our building. Mm -hmm. So, usually when we rate a building, we give a plug to any of the uh, you know, project owner. So that may be a metal plug or a glass plug, hmm. which is now uh, having a new version which is called the dynamic plug, which, which is like a light bed. So it's going to give you the performance of that building at that particular moment and that particular time. Okay. So we assess performance based on, you know, certain parameters like energy, transportation, waste, environment quality, water. So you either you need to feed in the values or you need to integrate your uh, dynamic plug with your VMS system which can automatically fit in the value and make it more dynamic. Amazing. So that's a solution you know, that was launched in India a year before uh, and worldwide during the Green Belt Conference that we had two years back. Okay. So that's a concept which is getting you know, uh, excited by a lot of stakeholders you know, uh, because ultimately when you, uh, when, you, when you go for a green building, uh, you, know, you want to maintain that savings or maintain that exactly. performance for the life of the building. So that's the performance tool. It's like a blood blood pressure machine. Correct. Just put it on the hand and you get, you know, the measurement. It's like, you know, blood pressure machine for us. And I think that's a very great innovation that USGBC and Lead India have taken. Now, moving further, uh, I would like to know, you know, since you said, you know, there are so many processes involved, uh, people invest so much in making green buildings. So, generally, it's a costly process. So, is it that, uh, you know, can there be any solution to this? Can green buildings be made affordable? Cost, incremental cost is actually a relative term. Hmm. So, when we talk talk about cost and we now when we talk about uh, the top builders and developers mm -hmm. they are talking about there is no incremental cost while constructing a green building because uh, it depends on the baseline you know okay every corporate or every developer would have certain benchmarks and baseline mm -hmm. and if they start comparing it with the lead performance uh, lead benchmarks they say that we don't have to spend anything else extra so these are the kind of people you know that uh, these are the kind of sound bites that we are getting from developers okay. but on the whole you know Yes, you can say that green buildings cost a little bit more, which may be 5-7% when you go for platinum rated green buildings, with a payback period of 3-7 to seven years. Okay. So, so uh, yes, there would be certain cost element, but uh, at the same time there are great savings also. Exactly. And when you say, when you ask, you know, how can you make it more afford affordable? So, one best solution of, uh, you know, uh, making it more most affordable is conceptualizing the green building right from the initial stages. Exactly. Because something which is conceived as green would actually cost less because unless uh, at, at, in the final stages when you think that you know you should go for a green building certification, hmm. then you might have to do certain changes and then could be the incremental cost could be a little higher. Mm -hmm. But at the same time when you design and conceptualize a building right from the beginning, mm -hmm. your all the parameters will fall in place and you know uh, the cost will automatically come down. Exactly. And the other way of looking of reducing the cost is you know market transformation. Exactly. So the reduced prices of uh, the raw materials, uh, you know, especially the efficient raw materials, mm -hmm. uh, when you talk about lighting or the chillers, so how we can, you know, uh, do more research and development to bring down the cost mm -hmm. and also make it more efficient. So these are the some of certain innovations that, uh, you know, mm -hmm. that can make the building 
what for the uh, we are talking about architectural design so uh, when it comes to architecture we should not forget our ancient architecture yeah. so uh, you know what role can ancient architecture play you know in green buildings and the design that we need to follow in the current scenario ancient architecture plays a very important role in fact what we are talking to today hmm. is learning from the past exactly so if if, if you if you talk about the example of taj mahal or you know hmm. the red fort or the old fort we are talking about green buildings but we do have conventional buildings so does lead have any role to play in existing buildings yes yeah, so definitely lead has a rating on existing building and mm. that's again a very very important subject because existing buildings those are those buildings you know which were constructed at the time when we didn't had the, the that efficient technology or that efficient products so there is a lot of scope uh, of improvement and a lot of scope of uh, you know reducing the energy and water Uh, consumption in these buildings so we have a rating for existing building uh, and, and and you know that's the actual reality check in fact what people right now are doing is in terms of design and construction they go for lead uh, uh, new construction rating and to have the reality check they go for existing building rating and they also put a dynamic plot to you know okay. see the actual performance of how the buildings are performing right now okay and for existing building we have a, a partnership with terry hmm. so we, we are we are jointly working on uh, Uh, you know some uh, technical aspects with Terry. In fact, USGBC has a approach of local, regional, and local. Sorry, global, regional, and local. Mm-hmm. Uh, in which you know uh, we say that ours is a global brand. To make it more regionalized, we have a partnership with Terry, wherein they are providing technical inputs uh, in the form of alternate compliance path. So, what alternate compliance path is? Uh, you know there are certain standards uh, which which are more specific to us hmm. so people say that why should i have to uh, follow those standards exactly so we make those standards more compatible to the climatic conditions by uh, you know you know getting acps uh, alternate compliance path what it does is that uh, you know any standard which has equal or more rigor than the already existing standard in lead we adopt it as a acp which may be a local standard hmm. so people don't have to follow the us standard they can follow the indian standard at the same time which are meeting the lead requirements or surpassing the lead requirements now moving further since you are putting so much focus on design now i would like to know what role design has to play in sustainable development design again has a very important role to play because you know while conceptualizing a building you know where should uh, be the openings uh, what kind of design is it a jali structure or uh, is it a conventional structure mm. so design plays a very very important role and uh, especially you know when we talk about the daylight because we we encourage a lot of daylight to come into the building we encourage a lot of views uh, mm. to, for for the employees uh, because because we feel that uh, you know uh, when the occupants are exposed more to the environment they feel more happy they feel, they they fall less sick so th- that's what you know the concept of uh, green buildings is all about correct so architectural design plays a very important role and here uh, our architects are doing a great job there are some very beautiful and very uh, innovative buildings that are constructed and uh, conceiving green we are talking about architectural design so uh, when it comes to architecture we should not forget our ancient architecture yeah. so uh, you know what role can ancient architecture play you know in green buildings and the design that we need to follow in the current scenario ancient architecture plays a very important role in fact what we are talking to today hmm. is learning from the past exactly so if if, if you if you talk about the example of taj mahal or you know hmm. the red fort or the old fort they never had a air conditioning or a lighting system exactly still you feel very very comfortable when you are inside Correct. because of various reason you know it may be architectural design or you know it's because the jali walls or if you if you take the example of old havelis so there used to be a old old courtyard in between you know where there was a space to uh, uh, for air circulation uh, there was air light coming in lot of uh, fresh air coming in so these are all the learnings that we have borrowed from the past and you know we are still continuing and we are just conceptualizing in terms of green so are these ancient architectural buildings also energy efficient see if you see all these ancient buildings what i quoted hmm. so they never had a lighting system exactly so we cannot say that whether they are energy efficient because they they will never have a hvac system or air conditioning system correct correct still you feel very very comfortable exactly. in terms of temperature hmm. so definitely yeah 
they are efficient because they are not consuming anything exactly correct so moving further uh, let's talk about the benefits of green buildings so why do you suggest a builder or developer should make green buildings see there are two benefits to it one is a tangible benefit another one is a non tangible benefit mm-hmm. and the third one is that there is a market demand right now correct so tangible benefits uh, you know everybody knows that green buildings are efficient and uh, they are capable of saving 35 to 40% of energy and 35 to 40% of water and that's a direct benefit to the owner or whoever is occupying the building the other benefit which is a non tangible benefit is that uh, people tend to fe- tend to feel more happy uh, more uh, convenient more, you know Uh, more comfortable in a green building because they are more exposed to the environment mm-hmm. they are more connected to the environment exactly so those are the elements you know some abstract elements uh, uh, which which you know people are now experiencing and demanding the third element is because the demand is coming from the uh, consumer side okay there are a lot of mnc's lot of uh, it giants who have mandated to that they will only walk into a lead at least gold certified building you know because of the market demand and because people have now uh, realized the importance hmm. uh, of uh, uh, you know constructing uh, or being in a green building especially when it comes to the employees because employees are the biggest strength and biggest asset to the office so uh, you know that market pull is actually uh, encouraging more and more people to go for it the concept of well rating was introduced in india a few months back so i would like to know more about this rating yes yeah, so the well rating was introduced in india 4 months back uh, and this rating talks about uh, you know the wellness of a building so basically this is coming from it, it originally belongs to the international well building institute based in the united states and usgbc have actually struck a collaboration with iwbi in which you know usgbc will take care of the operations as well as the certification of this well rating through our certification arm which is called gbci green business certification institute okay so the well rating basically talks about you know the interior aspects of a building you know certain abstract parameters like you know mind light nourishment health environment quality uh, etc etc so these are the elements which are very important uh, you know in every day's life but at the same time we uh, you know somehow neglect them hmm. and this rating talks about all these parameters at length and uh, you know focuses on various uh, elements and this is again a performance based uh, uh, rating system okay. so a lot of clients are very excited about it you know especially the hotels the hospital industry the higher end residential apartments uh, you know some top corporate offices so they are they are very happy to know about you know this concept because this is something which is new and very very important to the employees of the building now talking about green buildings again green buildings are something you know not many people are aware about though there has been you know a lot of talk about it but not many are aware about it so tell me what lead india hub is doing to promote green buildings couple of initiative that we have taken you know uh, it, in order to promote more education we, hmm. we we are trying to you know engage with some education partners who can actually uh, impart that particular uh, mindset and the, and the knowledge base which is required for a green building professional uh, we have also the credentialing system which we call lead accredited professional and ga professional so we have something close to 6 to 700 lead professionals in india okay. and we want to increase that number to a greater extent so you know we, we are talking about of colleges and we have a very innovative concept called lead labs okay. in which you know uh, any masters or a graduate student would read a curriculum for a particular year he would have experience of working on a live project within mm-hmm. the own campus building or you know they can adopt a particular uh, building outside the campus so that once they leave the campus uh, they have the experience of you know working on a live project plus they can have a international credential of lead accredited professional uh yeah, so this was another one initiative we are also working very closely with the lead consultant organization because we want their quality and capability to build up to a greater extent because these are the guys who actually handled uh, the clients right from the beginning so uh, you know that's something that we're working upon uh, we are also you know uh, trying to uh, give additional credential to this consulting organization which is called the lead proven provider in which you know based on the quality of uh, uh, you know their work they would be achieving these credential over a period of time so there was you know couple of um, initiatives that we had taken in the last few months uh, okay. plus we are also working with a lot of uh, state and central government you know making uh, them aware about uh, the benefits of lead 
And I think uh, from Spin TV, we would wish you all the best in your endeavor. And we hope, you know, the green buildings concept reaches to the millions in India as well as worldwide. Well, moving further, now I would like to know, uh, since we want to promote green buildings, should they be made, you know, the construction of green buildings should be made mandatory? That's a good question. So, mm -hmm. uh, mandatory in India, it's a little tough right now. Okay. Uh, in fact, in anywhere in the, in the world, it's not uh, mandated. So, okay. it's recommendatory, not mandatory right now. Uh, but yes, at the same time, you know, government plays a very important role, uh, you know, uh, because there, there is an ECBC code which is coming from Ministry of Power, Bureau of Energy Efficiency. Correct. Uh, and, uh, you know, that code talks about the uh, minimum standards of energy and that's getting notified in many of the states in a, in a phase manner. So we also see government opening up in this direction and uh, you know ECBC code is something which all the lead buildings actually follow and some of them even surpasses that code. So uh, yes, uh, it's, it's a matter of time, uh, government is also, you know, the aggressive plans of Prime Minister Modi, we can also think about, you know, uh, making it in some form or the other, making it mandatory, if I, if, if I should say that not completely, at least some component of it. But uh, definitely is something which is uh, which would be of great interest to in society. What role can government play in promotion of green buildings? So government, yeah, can play a very important role. Uh, in fact, uh, you know, a lot of government buildings have actually gone for LEED certification. Uh, the country's first stadium, Jagrat Stadium, has gone for LEED certification. The Ministry of External Affairs building, their headquarters, have gone for uh, LEED certification. Very recently, uh, uh, you know, the Ministry of Environment and Forest, Indira Pariyar and Bhavan, mm -hmm. that's the government first net zero building that has also gone for lead platinum rating. So government also recognizes the importance of it and you know and can play a very important role. In fact right now central some of the central and the state governments uh, they are offering some additional FAR for uh, uh, okay. going green. So through your channel also we would like to you know urge the government uh, mm -hmm. to extend those benefits for the lead rated buildings as well considering that uh, you know these are the global benchmarks and uh, you know being followed uh, you know throughout the world. Exactly. And I hope, you know, that we, both of us, uh, you know, we succeed in that endeavor of promotion of green buildings. And today, thank you for calling us here and, you know, sharing with us so much fruitful information about green buildings. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. So today we spoke about green buildings, the importance of it, the health benefits that one can get and the role the government can play in promotion of green buildings. For more updates on real estate as well as architecture and design, stay tuned to SPIN TV. Goodbye and take care.